Hello everyone, I am going to talk about microtransactions and why I think they are for the most part terrible. I do think that microtransactions can be used for good, but I think when people say microtransactions they're not necessarily thinking inherently of small purchases, which is really what microtransactions would mean if you took the parts that said micro and the part that said transactions you know small payment I'm not saying that, that that's necessarily a bad thing because you know you can buy like you can spend 10 pence to get like a tiny suite and enjoy it and I've got no problem with that that would effectively be a micro transaction in the sense it's a small payment but when people say microtransactions, they don't necessarily mean small payments because some games do have microtransactions and some of them are really expensive. I think one example would be, say, like a game like Farmville or any type of Zynga free to play Facebook type game where you have to collect resources to play more and collect more resources to make your area bigger and unlock more bigger things to do the same thing again and you know those games I'm not saying that that system I'm not saying that that particular part of the system is bad because there are some games and it, it's perfectly reasonable to to us to say that a game that is about just expanding and getting bigger can be enjoyable of course it can but the problem is that, is that with these free to play games the microtransactions are all about this thing and they're all about collecting resources and what you actually buy are resources I don't think it's a good thing when you can buy something that allows you to do better I don't know you might want to call it a moral thing or like an ethical thing or just the gamer in me but I just hate the idea that someone can be, be better than someone else because they've paid more money or even just the idea that I can be better than someone else if I pay more money and I think really when you have a game that does that it can really devalue the skill that some people have like when they when they actually do have the skill and they know what they're doing to know that other people who can spend more money and do better than them because they've spent more money because they're rich because they have rich parents or because or because they have a better paid job or because they don't spend their money on other luxuries I just that really gets on my nerves there is a type of microtransaction that I have no problem with and that is a microtransaction that provides content now it's not so easy to explain the difference but I'll try anyway you can buy content and you can buy resources. Resources are basically there to help you win. The more resources you have, the more that you win, or the more that it helps you to win. It's always good to have more resources than it is to have less, if in terms of the goal of the game, for the player that is. So the player wants more resources. Now, content is different. Content is the game itself. If I go out and I buy a game, sure I want to buy the game knowing that I can win and when I play the game the resources that I gather in the game will help me to win but I'm not going to buy it knowing just that I'm going to win. If I had a game and I put it in and then it just says you win, da -da 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 -da. end of game, congratulations, fireworks, right from the beginning, I wouldn't enjoy that because it's got no content. Content is like the challenges that you need to overcome. Now of course the opposite of resources you could say is lack of resources. Of course I'm not going to pay to remove resources from me because that would just be stupid. It would be unstrategic to do so. But I think a good example of the microtransactions where you're buying content is something like Tekken Revolution which is on the PS3 and I think this is a really good example of how microtransactions should be done. Now microtransactions that are for buying resources, no sorry, for buying content, like Tech and Revolution, it's not about paying to make you better, it's about paying to be able to play more often or having more stuff to play. And 
what Tekken Revolution does is you have in the game you have these in-game coins that you use to you spend them and they allow you to play in arcade mode or online mode against other people and when you use up these coins and you don't have any then you can't do anything but if you've got less than the maximum amount of coins that you can hold they will recover back over time so say you've played the game then you leave it for a few hours you'll come back you'll have some coins back so you can't just sit down and blast through it you have to play a bit come back play a bit later come back what you can do is you can spend real money to buy these premium coins I think they are or premium tickets it's been a bit of time since I've played it I know there's premium coins and tickets but I think you buy premium coins and they they basically allow you to play another round each one you have allows you to play another round whilst you've got none of your main coins and I think this is a brilliant system and I can totally back this up because what you are what you are spending money for is the ability to play you are paying to play even though the game itself is free to play you are also paying to play gamers or at least I should hope gamers like to spend their money on games and the ability to play because playing is inherently fun there is the playing, playing that is inherently fun but the winning is the winning inherently fun I would say no is losing inherently not fun again I would say no losing and winning is part of the whole system of what a game is that allows it to be fun so paying for more content or paying for the ability to play more often is perfectly fine with me because it just it just makes so much sense and I can totally back that up now when it comes to energy systems in these Facebook games like Farmville and all that that's different because I would differ that from paying for content I would say that's paying for resources the reason I say that is because well first of all I'll explain how the energy works in these games these Facebook games everything that you do costs energy so say Farmville and I've only played Farmville for a very short amount of time thought it was really boring didn't bother with it but I think I've played enough to gain like a vague idea and beside I did play a fair bit of Cityville which I actually did quite enjoy and so I can kind of like relate to that but say with Farmville I plant some seeds that costs one energy and I plant some other seeds that costs one energy I harvest these crops that have just grown that costs one energy and then like with the coins on Tekken Revolution the energy comes back over time and what you can do is you can spend real money to get more energy back so you don't have to wait sounds a lot like Tekken Revolution doesn't it but it's not because while the coins in Tekken Revolution allow you to play again the energy in Farmville and Cityville and the Zynga Facebook games aren't about playing more often because really taking an action like clicking on a farm or clicking clicking on a barn or clicking on a cow that's not that's not playing that that clicking action isn't playing what that clicking action is is it's using a resource so that you can activate something to give you stuff in the future am I making sense and I would say that the Farmville Zynga type method I cannot I cannot accept well you know, I'm I'm not, I'm not gonna like go a huge raid against it because you know it they're there and you know they're bound to exist so whatever. But I can't get into it and I basically don't like the idea at all. But I think that's just like the the true gamerness in me, if you know what I mean. But the type like Tekken Revolution, I can totally get behind. I think it gets to a bit of a when it comes to trading card games this is where it gets a bit tricky because with trading card games you have to buy new decks and new cards and I'm sure there's some like computerized versions of these where you can win the cards but ultimately you do have to have to buy the card if you're gonna play the physical game which uh, I mean there's not I mean when it comes to a physical card game you really can't avoid that even though I don't like it you can't really avoid that system on a computerized version you could avoid it and I think that the Game Boy Color version of Pokemon Train Card Game is a brilliant example of this 
There is, of course, the Pokemon trading card game online, which isn't this at all, where you do buy the cards. And, and I'm sure there's, like, computerised versions of other card games as well. Although, I am interested in, um, I am interested to know about the Magic the Gathering, what's it, Jewels of the Plains walk? I don't know, I can't remember. I'm probably saying that wrong. But, I'm quite interested if you can earn the cards, and if you can grind the cards, and you don't have to buy them, I would be interested. Because, well, it seems like a pretty good card game. Recently someone taught me how to play, kind of, you know, just like introduction, and I am interested. But if it is literally, you know, buying the cards and all that, I can't get into it. Because those types of microtransactions, you know, I don't like it at all. I do not like buying the ability to do better in a game. I do not like it at all. Although I will give one example of a game where there is some DLC, which is kind of... It's not really a microtransaction, because it's just flat out... DLC and it's extra content but it kind of kind of works as like a resource booster as well. In Burnout Paradise there is the the extra island what's it called? I can't remember the name but there's another there's like an extra island that you can buy and you know there's got more challenges it's got it's got more stuff I think it's got more stuff for you to unlock it's got its own trophy set so it actually does have its own content and that's great but also the bridge between the island and the main area on Burnout Paradise has loads of ramps and is really, really effective for building up your score. So it's kind of like you are kind of building on, like, buying resources in a way because you're buying something which grants you the ability to gain points faster because all these ramps are really effective. That's what I found. I mean, I got the DLC because I really like the game. I don't buy DLC often, but I did for that. And I did find that it really, that bridge really did help get some of the points for the stuff on the main part of the game. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this, let me know what you think, and I will see you all next time.